Hi, I'm Sam Vokes at Wickham Wanderers, and you're listening to Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome along to the latest edition of the Wickham Wanderers Show. In the next hour, we'll be reflecting on a fantastic victory against Barnsley last Saturday uh, with some uh, rather fantastic goals as well. Uh, we'll bring you a fantastic deep everything's fantastic. A fantastic debrief with Phil. We'll hear from Nick Freeman, one of the goal scorers as well. We'll look back at last night's uh, Carabao Cup defeat to Bristol City. We'll give you some highlights from the Q&A which happened before that at Adams Park with the manager and the chairman as well uh, which of course Phil hosted and also uh, in our uh, fantastic regular slot thanks to the Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association here from former midfielder Danny Bullman who was at the club between 98 and 2004 played under a a number of managers uh, scored a number of goals including his first one which uh, uh, went in rather innocuously, as you'll hear uh, a bit later on. So lots to get through, and uh, it's been a fantastic... Sort of seven, I keep saying fantastic. It's been a fantastic seven days. So much seems to have happened uh, since we last spoke to you, of course, including uh, the acquisition of that uh, fantastic uh, signing of um, Supermax, uh, the goalkeeper first choice, who made his debut, of course, against Barnsley on Saturday. So uh, lots to reflect on uh, in the next hour. But first, uh, here are some uh, highlights from last Saturday up at Oakwell. Welcome to Oakwell here for live commentary of Wickham Wanderers' trip to Barnsley in Yorkshire. The sun is out, it's beautiful weather, it's a little bit windy, but other than that, it's perfect for football. Uh, I'm Phil Catchpole, joined this afternoon uh, by Toby Lars. Toby, good to see you again, mate. Uh, big game this one. Yeah, definitely. It's a pleasure to be here as always. Thanks for having me on again. Um, no, I'm excited for it. You know, I think it's a game where, you know, really Wickham could maybe put the stamp on the league today if um, we could kind of turn turn the losing run around. And um, I'm sure Wickham, those, those will be the aims to stop the rot. Maybe a point would do, but I want all three. Ball into the box. Wheeler's on side. He lays it down to McCleary. Cushions it back to Mometi. Mometi, can he get a shot away? He can! And scores! And it's Mometi with a rocket! I thought he'd missed his chance to shoot. He just wanted to engineer a better position. He bought a yard and then left-footed, fires it past Brad Collins into the top corner. Wonderful strike for Anis for his second goal of the season. Barnsley nil, Wickham Wanderers won. Magnificent, majestic. Anis Mometi, you deserve all the praise that you can get for that. Just, you know, a little bit of pinball was going on between the two sides. Wickham just passing around the quick passes between them and McCleary teeing up Anis. He skips past one onto his weaker left foot and fires it into the far top corner from just inside the box. Wickham with a lead with really the first probably shot of the game. Gape goes for goal to keep it off his line. Dominic Gape scores! Oh my goodness! Dominic Gape from a full 50 yards catches Brad Collins off his line, chipped it perfectly. A little bit of backspin. It may have kissed the crossbar on the way in, and Collins rolled into the net in an ugly mess. Barnsley nil, Wickham Wanderers 2. Dominic Gape, that is glorious. A chip from, well, as you said, well on 50 yards. Sees the goalkeeper off his line and. I thought that he was maybe trying to clip a ball over to, to Gareth McCleary at first when he played that, but no. Chips his man from near on the halfway line. That is as good of a goal as I imagine we're going to see in a Wickham shirt this season, but there's been some good ones already so far. It's a 2-0 lead that Wickham thoroughly deserve. The fans are absolutely bouncing in the away end. Flicked on by Scoan. Wink tussling with Benson, but Scoan takes over again. Oh, that's a lovely ball by Scoan into Al Hamadi. Now Wing, edge of the penalty area. Wing. Twisting and turning. Feeds it to Freeman! Oh, what a goal by Nick Freeman! Have some of that! Fantastic from the midfielder. Wing with the assist. And Nick Freeman, back from a long-term injury. Superb strike. And Wickham Wanderers lead here at Hopewell 3-0. Absolutely ferocious from Freeman. That Josh Goan ball to tee up Ali Alhamidi down the wing was just superb. He's been absolutely phenomenal today. Alhamidi gives it into Wink, who shows neat footwork, tees it off for Nick Freeman, who does the rest just outside the box on his stronger right foot, fires it into the far left corner, the top corner, may I add. And yeah, Nick Freeman, he is well and truly back, and he will be absolutely delighted. And I'm sure there'll be no more possible popular goal scorer today and Nick Freeman in that dressing room I think about two and a half thousand people in Barnsley just realised they left their car unlocked because they're all leaving for some reason <laughs> yeah I think we've missed the fire drill here for Max Striek decides to take the goal kick from the other side of the six yard area having not not fancied it from the other side having had a good look at it clears it right footed 
bit clearance. And the referee blows up here for full time. A dream day for Wickham Wanderers. A dream day for Max Striek. A dream return to the goal-scoring charts for Nick Freeman as well. And take a bow, Dominic Gate. And Anis Fometti as well. With the final score. Barnsley nil, Wickham Wanderers 3. Some weeks you don't get much in the way of highlights. Some weeks you get quite a lot of highlights. A fantastic result, some fantastic goals. And I'm very pleased to say uh, Phil is with us, who's the club's head of audio and broadcast, of course. Host of Ringing the Blues and, as you just heard, describer of many a fantastic goal and uh, a rather fantastic afternoon at Oakwell. Yeah, a wonderful day all round. I think a lot of Wickham fans, and I have to admit, myself included, on the long journey up there, was probably contemplating a point and thinking, you know, a draw would be a good place. Uh, Oakwell, Barnsley haven't lost in League One um, at home since 2016, believe it or not. I mean, they've obviously had a couple of years in the Championship in between, but they went through the entire 18-19 season without losing at home in League One. So uh, a tough place to go, and they've made a good start at home this year. So... No one really saw the 3 0 win, uh, me included, coming. Um, but Wickham bust it, really. Um, it was a classic away performance in the first half. Um, frustrated Barnsley, then frustrated the crowd, who then uh, you could hear on the commentary uh, some, uh, some really sort of interesting uh, contributions from the fans behind us, <laughs> uh, mainly frustrated. And then in the second half, the frustration was then passed back onto the pitch and the players really kind of lost their game plan a bit and lost their heads and Wickham were able to, um, to do some, uh, some good stuff. And the three goals, three wonderful, wonderful goals. Um, you know, the, each one, you know, normally on a Saturday would have been the best goal of the game, but it was a really tough competition to decide who had scored the best one, which is a, a nice feeling to have on the way back. A really nice for uh, each of those goal scorers to get them as well. Yeah, I mean, each one's got their own story. Anis Mometi, um, we talk about his season this year and thinking this is his breakthrough season, which sounds unusual because obviously he's been at Wickham for a couple of years now and, and did well in the championship and got four goals. Um, but now he's kind of, he's, this is his coming of age season where he's really going to start to to fulfil his potential. He's got the all-round game now. I think that time spent um, at Wickham Wanderers with Gareth Fainsworth and Richard Dobson and, and the coaching staff, he's become the you know the complete player. He's got the defensive side to his game. He's added a lot of upper body strength. Now he's stopped growing, um, and he's just so determined and so focused on um, advancing his career. Um, it's a joy to watch him in the Wickham shirt. So that that goal was was kind of that story covered off. Uh, Dom Gape uh, doesn't score many goals, but when he does, we tend to remember them. And this one was a superb goal from about 45 yards, um, a chip. And I think I said at the time, as soon as he hit it, I thought, well, that's going in. Uh, the keeper made a valiant effort, but unfortunately couldn't get there for him on his part. Um, but yeah, brilliant, brilliant goal from, from um, Gapey. And then Nick Freeman, um, a goal of sort of technical excellence. Um, but then the story of Nick Freeman is just wonderful because um, it was... A year, it was nearly a year to the day. It was the day after the Barnsley game. The Sunday was the 12 month anniversary of Nick rupturing his cruciate ligament um, in his knee. So um, it almost felt like the closing of that story and Nick now able to sort of get his head up now and and start to resume his career on full throttle because he's made some really good cameo appearances from the bench this season, Saturday included. And the goal was just wonderful. Um, The way that he celebrated, the way that he spoke about it afterwards um, and from what his teammates and the staff have all said as well because they've all seen that journey. They've been there on on a daily basis with him when he's been in the gym doing the solitary uh, work, sort of getting back up to speed in his rehab and then slowly getting back into training and yeah this pre-season he's been magnificent and the early stages of this season so from a personal point of view fantastic to see Nick score uh, and the icing on the cake of a really good day for the club I was going to say especially pleasing for you because obviously you know you spent so much time that sat next to him uh, recently as well well, I'd like to claim nearly all of the credit for that goal <laughs> on Saturday by saying that Nick has seen the game differently since sitting with me in the commentary box. But uh, um, I think I'm a lone voice in that in that opinion. <laughs> but uh, it was great to have Nick with me. I got to know him very well as the season unfolded last season. And so, yeah, there was sort of um, internally, I was sort of going, I was so pleased for him because, you know, I've got to know him and I know what he's been through. Um, so, yeah, I was really chuffed for him. Um, so, yeah, it was a real privilege to be there to see that goal and, and be part of that journey.
I was really chuffed to speak to him after the game as well and uh, and find out how he felt when the ball hit the back of the net. I don't even know how to celebrate. It just comes so quick. Obviously, good finish top corner, but I just, it just meant so much to me. I think Seth just reminded me, tomorrow was uh, basically a year since I had my injury, so couldn't have come at a better time. And yeah, I'm just so grateful for the support and everything along the way, and it meant a lot to me today. A year of graft, yeah. hard work dark times the emotion of when the ball hit the back of the net what was going through your mind yeah it was very emotional like you said the dark times of the graft the last nine months and just to get to this point to get my first goal since two three years I think um, yeah it it did mean a lot to me like I said I didn't know what to do or say or how to celebrate it just yeah I was was mind mind blown Uh, and we've got to mention the medical team that have helped you out here because we've seen how hard you've been working at the gym throughout the injury the milestones the first day back out on the grass etc but the team around you have put a lot of work in too yeah Isaac, he and Ali all the physios um, been top top draw especially Isaac he's been with me every single step of the way I was torn between running to him or you for that acceleration but I just (laughs) I I didn't want to upset anyone (laughs) but yeah they've been top top draw they've been with me through every single step and helped me and, and, and made me feel secure about everything that was going on and can't be more grateful and also that that year at contract extension as well going in into that knowing that the club would have given that to you as an injured player how much of a help was that yeah that's unbelievable from the gaffer and above uh, I can't thank him enough for that I'll never forget that um, I believe everything happens for a reason and that's the where I am where I am still at Wickham now and I'm so so thankful for that because who knows what would have happened if I didn't get that extra year on my contract Let's talk about the game. A 3 0 away victory at Barnsley, a team who really pride themselves at this level on their home performances and results. But Wickham have been struggling of late in the league, and that's a great result. Yeah, well, after Tuesday, Exeter, that was kind of three wins, there were three losses in a row. And Gaffer just went back to the drawing board and said, let's go back to being Wickham, let's go back to being nasty, uh, playing in their half, playing forward. And that's what we've done most of the game. And when it opened up, the quality showed three obviously really good goals. Um, and we, were looked, we looked more like Wickham today. It's proper solid performance don't think they really look like scoring much as well which shows that defence being solid like we've always been the past few years as well it just looks proper Wickham today uh, you scored a goal a fantastic goal on a day of fantastic goals so yeah. I mean normally your goal would probably be goal of the day but Dominic Gabe was it 50 yards yeah I'll say Gabe was probably the best he's out of nowhere he's just dinged the keeper for nah this ain't going in it's just <laughs> hit the back of the net <laughs> he probably couldn't have believed it but it was it was on a lot I, I had one I could have done as well but I didn't get my head up quick enough um, yeah three three terrific goals I'll probably say mine was second I'll let Anis take the third spot <laughs> I was going to say Anis's goal was yeah, pretty that was brilliant as well. good feet and then great left foot but the link up play between the front three because without Sam Vokes we're having to play a bit differently in the final third aren't we yeah we had uh, we had a few options we had Anis getting 1v1 we had um, Gareth McCleary uh, running down the channel with his pace and we had um, obviously David Wheeler a massive threat in the air we had three very versatile uh, forwards that could interchange and it worked to treat today they were brilliant uh, the gaffer said you've come back a stronger player and uh, after this injury as well but it's always that experience of the commentary box for, yeah. <laughs> for you know for a good seven months as well of course and has that had any contribution to your excellent oh form? of course it's made me stronger man <laughs> <laughs> yeah I thoroughly enjoyed it thoroughly enjoyed it that, got, that, that as well got me through my injury a lot so I have to appreciate yourself Phil for that well, I did talk you through how to score a golf mouse yeah. the there a few times. So it seems like as well, obviously such a short time since we last spoke, but so much seems to have happened, especially uh, the arrival of a new goalkeeper. Yeah, well, we know seven days is a hugely long time in football, especially when the transfer window's open. And uh, Max Striek uh, had an excellent debut at Barnsley. Um, like we were saying earlier, tough place to go in League One. Um, he made a, you know, a brilliant save in the first five minutes and that really set the tone. Um, and I think almost everyone sort of breathed a collective sigh of relief and thought, we don't know much about this guy, but this looks good. Um, and he backed it up and did everything, you know, very well after that as well. He made a couple more routine saves. His distribution was good on, on a tricky day in, in some high windy conditions. Um, so, yeah, he looks to be a good signing. And Gareth Fainsworth is speaking about him positively as well and saying, you know, he's our player. We've signed him. He's 26. He's a good age for a keeper. He's coming into his prime. Um, so they, they think he can play higher than League One and they hope he does that with Wickham Wanderers but they'll be creating an asset there but also it's good to have a number one at the club a figurehead because we've got two young goalkeepers as well under him and they will progress working with Max too 
It does look like he'll have such a great presence and, and it feels like, it, obviously it's not why, why the club does stuff, but it feels like it kind of settles a bit of rumbling as well. Fans, you could feel uh, certainly online having a bit of discontentment the fact that a goalkeeper hadn't arrived. There were rumours about, you know, the young Manchester United keeper and that sort of fell through. And But great to sort of have that kind of settled now. Yeah, I think, you know, when results are going against you, then fans quite rightly scrutinise everything and then put their opinions forwards. And, and social media is tending to be, if you've, if you've got a gripe or a complaint, social media tends to be quite busy. When things are going well, I think people may be in the pub or doing other things and, and not forgetting, you know, maybe forgetting to go online and say, well, this is all great, isn't it? Um, but yeah, it, there was no secret that the, that the club wanted to replace David Stockdale and they'd had a loan lined up and they'd got really far down the road, as far down as you could possibly get, I think, without it being actually across the line. Um, they found that frustrating, obviously, and and, and Gareth Ainsworth and Rob Kuhig have spoken about that. Um, I think Gareth mentioned it in his Q&A last night at the club. Um, so, yeah, you, and you can see that they are quite... You know, quite aggrieved by that, what happened. Um, but everything happens for a reason. It wasn't to be. Uh, I feel sorry for the young keeper concerned because you know he's, he's he wants to play football. Um, but we've got a, we've got this uh, we've got Max Triek now who is wanting an opportunity in English football um, to to make a name for himself. And what a great platform he's got now at Wickham Wanderers. Uh, you know, a nearly full season in League One in front of him, um, and we look forward to seeing what he can do. But yeah, I think from a fan's point of view, of course, frustrating because when you're losing and you're thinking, well, we still haven't signed a goalkeeper yet. Well, you know, let's, let's uh, pitchforks that are ready. Let's go out there, um, which is understandable. But now it's settled. Hopefully the injuries start to come back as well with the keeper coming in. And we start to see a decent run of results um, and using that, that game against Barnsley as a springboard. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Injuries have had such a, an, an impact on the side so far this season. When we learned this week that Ryan Tafasoli had, had a stomach muscle problem. Yeah, uh, uh, Taft's had, um, I think it's an abductor muscle or something, which, you know, when you see him sort of on his videos and you think, well, you know, he's literally all muscle. Uh, uh, but yeah, it just reminds us that these people are human. They can have uh, injuries just like me and you, Colin. And, and you know, we had Sam Vokes on, on the commentary for the League Cup game and the frustration of being injured is, is immense for these players because it's their bread and butter going out there and playing. They miss it. Uh, they hate watching the game. <laughs> which, uh, you know, obviously they do and they kick and hit every ball, you know, figuratively as well. But they find it incredibly frustrating. And at this stage of the season, having done all of the hard yards in pre-season, got yourself in, in great shape. And then you get this niggly little injury at the very start. And when you want to start to be getting into the rhythm of games, and it's really frustrating uh, for the players and also frustrating for the fans because folks in and Tafazoli if you include the keeper as well, you know, that's that's the spine of a team. Uh, we've had issues at set pieces and defensively and, and both of those players have been missed in that respect. Um, but I know a lot of Wickham fans are very excited to see Tapazoli come back into a side alongside Alfie Mawson and Chris Farina. Um, I think um, once they're all fit and raring to go, then we've got three excellent centre-backs there. And there really was a feeling on Saturday, I think, after the game that, uh, you know, this is, this is much better now. We're, we're, this, this could be the start of something good. Yeah, I mean, football's very simple, isn't it? Win games and, and, you know, and the sun shines, everything's all right. Um, but yeah, I mean, the manner of the, of the victory helps as well and, and the goals. Um, although had we scored three scrambled efforts of 1-3-0, I, I think the reaction would have been largely the same. Um, but yeah, winning games, is just, it's just the perfect tonic, really, um, especially on the back of three defeats um, and, and against a fancy team that have come down from the championship. And it's about using this now as a platform, Colin, because I don't think there are any easy games in League One. I think it's an incredibly competitive division. Um, I think last season... It was a split league. I think this season there's the ability that anyone can beat anyone on their day. Um, so there's going to be tough games week in, week out. And uh, and Charlton looks to be a tough one this Saturday because they've had a decent start under a new manager. Um, they've, they've got a, a really good squad there. Um, a big club we've been in the Premier League in recent years, um, you know, with don't want to use the B word too much on this show, but budget will come into it and they've, they've, they've got a larger budget than Wickham. I think that's fairly obvious looking at their squad list. But as we've learned over the years, you know, 
football isn't paid on the balance sheet, it's paid on the pitch and, and we could have punched well above their weight and we'll expect to do so against Charlton at Adams Park on Saturday. I was going to say that's something, you look at the, the, other, the other teams that are coming up and in, in the fixture list, but also obviously who, you know, teams like Barnsley and Charlton and you think, oh, you know, these were, uh, and probably still are in many respects, such big clubs and, and, and you know, I know it's not, not favourable to use the term Little Wickham anymore, but you see how far Wickham have come in terms of, you know, they're, they're really going toe to toe with these sides now. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Um, and it is difficult not to use the term Little Wick. I mean, by my last count, there are nine teams in League One who've been in the Premier League. And that's, you know, in, in the Premier League era, that goes back to the 90s. So it's not a huge amount of time. It was the 90s when Wickham left amateur football and went full time. Um, so, you know, in, in that short space of time, these giants of the game have fallen a little. Uh, and Wickham have, have risen. And here we are meeting in League One on uh, on level terms in terms of when you cross the white line. And it's fantastic because I know I speak to a lot of the older fans who remember going to Walthamstow Avenue, and Clapton, Hendon, Dulwich, Hamlet, and you know, and having a great old time in the Isthmian League. And uh, now we're going to places like Hillsborough, Portman Road. Fantastic. You know, and these, these days should be absolutely enjoyed and you know it's great to see the club competing against these teams as well and and so you know and more often than not taking points from them so let's talk a bit about last night's cup game obviously not the, the result but it seemed to be so many positives and and, and so good for the, the youngsters uh, obviously for Ali Alhamdi getting his first goal for the club as well and I think you, you can feel that the future is really bright uh, for Wickham yeah, it's a great night, I think, for the club in, in terms of its development squad because there's been, been lots of movement, um, as there will be because of the nature of, of the squad. Of You know, you do trialist games, you have a good look at a lot of young players uh, before making decisions on them. And, and Wickham have, have seen some go from last season and, and brought more in. Um, and it's exciting because these are our players. Um, and we've seen it with Mimetti and Farino. We've seen the results of this machine. And we're looking to see what the conveyor belt brings out next. And and last night, we started to see real glimpses of it. Ali Alhamadi, um, for a striker to get your first senior goal, your first goal for your club, in front of the terrace, um, a marvellous feeling for him. Um, Gareth Fainsworth afterwards as well, saying, you know, he's got a lot to learn. He's got a lot of work to do, but... You know, it's it's a rough diamond, and if if you know that they've got it in them, and, and and you can work on them, that's a very exciting prospect for the coaches and the fans. I thought Jasper Pattenden was excellent um, on the right hand side. He played further up in the first half, and then he filled in at right back where he didn't. He played in the first round against Northampton, and you know he's got a fantastic attitude. You just love to watch him play. Um, you know, and I think he's a bit like Luke O'Neill. If you ask him to drive the bus, he'd be more than happy to do that as well. Um, he's one of those players. Um, Adam Leathers, who's been here over a year now, and we haven't seen much of him due to injury and other issues, but he came on last night and uh, looked very tidy in midfield. Um, as well so they, you know it's really interesting to see these players grasping their opportunities Jack Wakeley another player that's had a, a torrid time of injury um, playing against Chris Martin and, and Naki Wells fantastic learning curve for him and I've seen a few Wickham fans online this morning saying a coming of age because um, I, thought, I thought he grew throughout the game I think he, he realised the size of the task uh, against him in the first 10-15 minutes and, and stepped up to it and, and learnt a lot um, so yeah it's exciting when they're our players um, you know, we've seen it in the past, you know, with the first coming of Alfie, Mo- Alfie Mawson and uh, Eberichi Eze, who was doing marvellous things on Match Today last week. Um, you know, we developed those players, but they weren't ours, they were on loan. But these guys are out and, you know, hopefully in the future can make great contributions on the pitch in the quarters, but also maybe um, command some, some money when they get sold. And obviously the positivity that comes across from the manager, both in, in post-match um, you know, chats with yourself and also uh, in the Q&A you mentioned last night as well, that he's really excited about the future. And um, you know, I think as fans as well, you think, oh, you know, perhaps if he, if he doesn't give so many details about injuries and he's keeping it in-house, that's for a reason. And you know, obviously he knows what he's doing and, and you know, we have a lot of trust and, and faith in him. And, and you know, it, look where he's got us so far. Yeah, I, mean, I think that the injury question was a really good one. I was very glad it was asked last night as well because... It's a common gripe on, on social media and on the forums. And I understand the fans' point of view because, you know, they're spending their money. They don't have to spend their money. We can wonder if they could go to the cinema or something. Um, you know, and you can read all about your film stars in the paper and find out what their injury or, uh, record is like quite easily. But with your players and you feel like you're investing in it. And I think as well where, you know, where the club is still owned a quarter by the, by the trust and the fans, um, there is that sort of demand to know absolutely everything. But... 
the, the day-to-day practicalities of that, Gareth spelled out very simply last night. He goes, I simply don't want um, the opposition and the coaching staff of our opposition to understand um, what we've got available coming into games. Um, and certain players will look at certain fans will look at that and think, I don't think there's much in that. But these are incredibly small margins we're talking about here, Colin, in, in, in professional football. The difference between winning, losing and drawing a match is absolutely tiny at this level. If Gareth thinks he can get a 0.0001% advantage from not telling them that maybe Sam Boach wasn't going to play against Bristol City last night, then so be it. You know, that's that's in his control. Um, and also, you've got to remember that, that Gareth didn't have anything uh, for many, many years of his managerial career at Wickham. And these are the only things that he could control. So I think he feels quite attached to them. But yeah, he explained it last night at the forum um, quite simply. Um, and it seemed to be well received in the room and I think people understand it but again it comes back to results when we're losing and people look at the injury list they say why isn't so and so back yet why don't we know what's going on with him yet Um, and I understand both sides of it but you know Gareth in Gareth we trust as we say and really interesting to hear from Rob as well plans with uh, what's what's going on at the stadium as well yeah exactly and I think it was really interesting to see the timeline of that because um in order for the stadium to have the improvements that fans want and that Rob wants to deliver for fans as well, more importantly, um, there has to be an access road um, because there's no point in in adding to the capacity and adding to the facilities at Adams Park if the well-reported access problems remain. You know, one road in, one road out, it causes issues, uh, especially on large attendances. Um, so for, for a further investment to Adams Park, Um, first of all, needs to be the road. That's been recognised by the Kuhigs, um, you know, straight away. And they've been getting on with it. It was really good to hear last night that Rob has been uh, meeting regularly with Lord Dashwood, who owns the the lion's share of the land um, that um, would involve this uh, access road coming out the back of uh, the world-famous car park. Um, So things are progressing. Um, And, you know, Rob, with his very optimistic American attitude on life, is probably what's been needed for this because for many, many years, everyone said we need a road and and no one's really been able to move it forward. But Rob has been been doing so and uh, we'll be keeping a close eye on on how that progresses. A real pleasure to speak to you. Uh, Thank you very much indeed for your time and uh, enjoy the game on Saturday. Thank you very much, Colin. Always a pleasure. Great chat to Phil. More from him next week. And don't forget, you can hear uh, his interviews in full on Wanderers TV. Online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM. This is Wickham Sound. Still to come on this week's edition of the Wickham Wanderers show, we'll hear from manager Gareth Ainsworth and also Rob Kuig as well, speaking at the Q&A at Adams Park last night. Uh, we'll catch up with the manager speaking after the game as well. That's before and after. Uh, we are spoiling you. Uh, first, however... Uh, as our usual slot with uh, many thanks to the Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association this week we catch up with a midfielder who spent six years at the club uh, came on loan uh, on a trial initially from Ashford Town uh, made his debut against Bristol Rovers and also featured in uh, a bit of a famous FA Cup run as well uh, which uh, I'm sure many uh, of us remember going to uh, Villa Park to take on Liverpool a very hard working midfielder Danny Bullman and uh, here's his uh, well sort of earliest memories of uh, how he started at the club I came on trial um, from Ashford Town under John Gregory at the time and um, performed really well on trial training matches. Uh, yeah, I was playing up front for the uh, the reserve team as, at uh, Wickham on trial. And um, yeah, I remember one story, I think, coming out of non-league and wet beyond the years, 18 years of, old, of older age, and um, I think it was uh, Gary Hill, was it? Uh, who's his assistant? And um, yeah, he put on the board that I was playing up front. So I, I, I pulled into one side and I really nervously and timidly said, so, 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 "Sorry, coach, but um, um, I don't, I, I don't, I don't play up front." And he just looked at me with his bald head and piercing eyes and just said, "You will play where I can tell you to play." And uh, yeah, that was my introduction to uh, working Wanderers, basically. And you scored on your debut in, in a most unusual manner. Fans may well remember. It's not how I <laughs> envi- envisaged me almost being remembered, shall we say, my my uh, my rear rear end <laughs> um, coming to get us a point against Bristol Rovers. So yeah, no, it was crazy, and uh, that whole season for me was. Crazy, you know, that I stepped up 
seven seven tiers, and um, I came into it full of energy, full of enthusiasm, absolutely buzzing to be a professional footballer. And yeah, it caught up with me a couple of months down the line because I soon found out that sort of fitness and uh, energy, enthusiasm, you know, it, it didn't cut the mustard. You needed to add quality to that and uh, with the ball, without the ball, you know, and it wasn't about just running around, which I did, you know, from a, from a very young age and wasn't taught professionally and with good good team teammates teammates around me and that's no disrespect to Ashford Town but yeah it was it was a it was a steep steep learning curve for me and um sort of yeah it was a tricky sort of start but yeah I'm remembered for my backside which is great <laughs> so what was it like that sort of step up as you say and, and, and did it take you a while to sort of acclimatize if you like initially no because I just almost sort of hit the ground running because I, obviously I, I came on trial under John Gregory but he left to go to Aston Villa then the trail went cold for a couple of months. Now I came back. It was Neil Smiley at the time and got the deal over the line. Done my first pre-season. Was fit, fit as a fiddle anyway, so that was a pretty sort of thing. And scored a few sort of goals in pre-season, this, that and the other. But yeah, managed to get on the bench and then came on against Bristol City. Scored off me backside and... Got a few games just because of my energy and just because we weren't doing great. I think Bristol Rovers was that got us the first point of the season, and I think that was after five games. So you know that's how sort of bad we were doing as a squad, and then the rest is history. Really, after Laurie Sanchez and Terry Gibson came in. It must have been such a fantastic time to to be at the club, and also some of the relationships you built up with with other teammates while you were there as well. Yeah, for me, I think I was very fortunate to be of an age where I got to play with, I'd like to call old school characters, you know, you had big, big, big characters, but there were characters, but there were men. And you, you rarely get that, you know, I've been in the game for too long, shall we say. And um, yeah, yeah, that, that group of men, I like to call them, were, were brilliant. And uh, the, yeah, it was just when I first walked into the club, the club, club captain, Keith Ryan, and he 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 was what I, what I wanted to be because everything about him was was brilliant. He was a lovely bloke, great authority, and uh, led the team very very well. And, that, and that's kind of my role uh, model when I was uh, at Wickham Wanderers. And people like um, Jason Cousins and uh, Paul McCarthy, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah. Sadly, uh, Paul McCarthy is no longer with us, but yeah, great lad. You know, oh, I formed a fantastic relationship with Michael Simpson. You know, you had Darren Curry, you had Roger John- Johnson coming through the ranks. You had Martin Taylor. You had uh, Sean Devine, and Rammel, you know, uh, Jamie Bates and uh, Steve Brown, obviously. And uh, it was just proper men. And, and they knew how to conduct themselves very well. And, uh, yeah, no, it, it, it taught me. Taught me a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things um, in this first few years. And also, I, I was quite surprised to see that that cup run is, is twenty years ago, and and it must have felt perhaps so. Well, obviously, <laughs> with, with your career, it must be hard to sort of chop things up into time periods. But obviously, that that two thousand and two kind of period and and getting to the, the semi final must have felt special. That run, yeah. At the time, it was surreal. You know, it's just you don't appreciate it. When it's happening, well, for me, I don't, I'm, 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 I don't appreciate the career I've had now. The longevity of anyway, I didn't play very well majority of my career, but uh, yeah, I, I, I sort of played to uh, to forty two. So I'm pretty sure people wouldn't turn around me at eighteen and said you'll play till forty two. Forty two, but yeah, that cup run was amazing considering the squad we have and the league position we were were in. And struggling in, in in League Two at the time, obviously it's the old League One. Um, yeah, I, I think I remember the, the game before the semi final. We got absolutely tonked by Walsall, four 0 away from home. I think, and it was like, you know, you can make all the excuses in the world about eyes are on Liverpool and stuff like that. But yeah, we were we were we were really sort of um, not performing well. 
domestically, but somehow, I don't know, it's, it had to be fate with the S and the goal and stuff like that. And the, the sort of depleted squad that we had that we managed to achieve, you know, one of the greatest days in, in, in uh, Wickham Wanderers uh, sort of uh, history and uh, probably in the FA Cup. And I think as well, what's really nice is obviously partly, I guess, because of your position and, and quite a sort of workman like midfielder, but also your character too. You're such a, such a fan favourite as well. Yeah, obviously, I, 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 I don't know. I, for me, as a, I'm a football fan, obviously, you know, pretty much all of us are. But for me, I, I like to see players. I like to see my team give a shift, and if they give a shift, put it all out there, then that's job done for me. So I tried to give that every game, so I could. I could switch off after games because if I give that, I could look myself in the mirror and I wouldn't mull over it too much. You know, maybe if it's a I just stinker and gave away a penalty or whatever, maybe, maybe that's a bit different. But majority of my games, if I if I knew I'd given my maximum, then 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 I was happy. And what's it like playing under the different managers? Because obviously, when you arrived, as you say, uh, John Gregory was the, the boss, but then Neil Smiley, and then Laurie, of course, and and John Gorman and, and Tony Adams latterly as well. Uh, yeah, it's it's again. I think I, think I spoke to John Taylor on the phone to, uh, to organise this, and um, he asked me a few questions about previous managers and stuff like that. And he goes, "Oh, what was uh, Sanchez like?" And I just said it was good cop, bad cop. Because you had a fantastic guy in Terry Gibson, and he was he was such a amazing bridge between staff and players because he could sit down and have a chat with you, and he had that respect. But he could give it out to you because he you built those sort of a, a, that bond, and then Laura Sanchez could just be the <laughs> the tough man, shall we say, and barking the orders. So uh, yeah, no, they were they were really good for me, and uh, Terry Gibson was uh, a big part of bringing uh, the personality out of me within a squad, you know. And, and I was one of the younger members of that squad. So it was, yeah, no, it was a big influence on on my um, career um, at Wickham Wanderers. And you obviously you must have enjoyed your time at the club, being there six years, which is probably something you couldn't have imagined when you first signed. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just go along with it. You know, it's what will be will be. I've done it sort of my whole career, basically. I'm not, I don't push the things. I'm not, because I grew up, playing football, loving football. And all I wanted to do is play football. I didn't want to be a footballer. I just wanted to play football. And I didn't know that you could have a career playing football. So the hobby, the the sport I loved became my job. So yeah, I was, whenever a contract was offered to me, I would just say yes straight away because I was, I was uh, very blessed to play football uh, as my job. And even on the other way, when managers came to me and said, you're not in our plans, then I would want to go move on to a club that I would play football. So, yeah, I was <laughs> quite quite an easy uh, player to uh, manage, I think. <laughs> Is that what sort of kept you going so long, if you like, in your career? Because I think at one point, uh, only a few years ago, you were the, the oldest active player in the EFL, I think. Yeah, I just, I just, I think injuries help with that. And just, I think, I think managers play a part with your longevity so um, managers can make you lose that love for football so obviously I had six years at Wickham I uh, went to Stevenage and again had a a good relationship with the manager there you know he was a bit of an oddball he was uh, Graham Wesley and uh, but I buzzed off it because it was just something different something fun and it was a bit different so I went along with that and then my uh, episode with Crawley sort of started after that and uh, again I wasn't playing at Stevenage and I went to Crawley to just put a smile back on my face start playing football again and then uh, I ended up going back there a few times so yeah it was just I always always wanted to play with a smile on my face have a laugh and give my all and yeah and it, it sort of worked out for me not financially, obviously, but uh, <laughs> but longevity-wise, yeah. And how has it been sort of stopping? Because you've only comparatively recently retired. It must be is it a sort of a relief or is it quite nice or do you really miss it? Um, I've learned how to watch it now, which is what I couldn't do really without a beer 
uh, during my career, but no, I enjoy watching it now and uh, sort of analysing it a bit better and just respecting what each individual can do within a sort of team setting. So, yeah, no, it's it's. Uh, I'm loving the weekends now. I'm loving not having boiled chicken and pasta <laughs> and uh, in a hotel somewhere. So, no, I'm enjoying that part of it and getting my, my weekends back because – it has been very, very regimented for 20 odd years. So it's, it's been good to, you know, really let my hair down and have a midlife crisis. So, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So what do we find you doing post-football? Um, uh, yeah, I'm just in a crossroads at the moment. I was uh, I was working at uh, the commercial apartment at Crawley about a year ago now, but that, that didn't... Uh, end up too well with the as a new takeover and stuff like that, and uh, a bit of my testimonial. But again, don't, don't know where that's uh, that's going. And uh, yeah, no, a sponsor of mine um, at Crawley. Uh, yeah, he owns a uh, sort of like a leasing fleet company, and uh, yeah, I'm just working for for him a, a, a bit and uh, see what happens. Obviously, I love to get back in football and. Um, Coaching isn't for me. I just we'll see what happens. Hopefully, I'll I'll be I'll be somewhere soon within football. Yeah, definitely. Wish you all the best for that. And do you ever sort of reflect on on your time, obviously at the clubs that you've been at, but particularly for these purposes, Wickham, and, and you know, really sort of think, oh, I had a, had a great time there, and really enjoyed uh, being with those players and playing for those fans. I don't think yet. I think obviously, you know, life just moves so fast. You, you know, at these at this day and age, you haven't got time to sit down and do what you got to do but like yeah uh, obviously I was forever indebted to for uh, working to take that chance on me and um, I had a hell of a time and a massive massive influence on my my career and um, yeah I think and again highlight of my career was at Wickham with the FA Cup run and something that I will always always look fondly of and put up put up at the, the top of my list and um, yeah there was, I remember uh, I think I found it really great but I turned up to a uh, a dinner and it was um, just a few old, old fellows were in attendance I think Martin Taylor Keith Ryan and um, Steve Brown attended with me so I haven't seen them in ages so it was good to see them and we were on stage. I was asking questions about the cut brown and stuff like that. And uh, went to Steve Brown. He was like, "Oh, you know, I heard you went away before the semi final for hot, hot weather of training. This, that, and the other." He came out with this spiel about, "Oh, yeah, we were so the older guys were so professional. We uh, we made sure the younger boys were in bed in time and stuff." And I was looking at him like, "You lying barn? What do you call it like that?" <laughs> Every night we was out till stupid o'clock in the morning and most most times the younger lads had to carry that person to bed because yes he enjoyed himself a lot and uh, so i was looking at him and like just tell him the truth mate come on it's it's, it's a bit more of a laugh with you like you know, it makes you a bit more human if you tell them that you absolutely went for it because it's not going to happen again. So, yeah, again, great laughs, great memories. And, uh, yeah, I do not know how we uh, got out at um, Aston Villa and uh, performed the way we did after the week we had in the in Spain or whatever. Really great insight from Danny Bullman. Fantastic to hear from him. And uh, thanks, as always, to the Wickham Wanderers Ex-Players Association. Online, on Radio Player and on 106.6 FM, this is Wickham Sound. Still to come on the final part of the Wickham Wanderer show for this week, we'll get the manager's thoughts uh, post-match last night uh, after that uh, defeat to Bristol City in the League Cup, of course. But uh, many positive, as you'll hear, uh, some fantastic, <laughs> keep saying fantastic, uh, some uh, fantastic uh, young talent on show at Adams Park last night. And if you're at the game, or perhaps you're listening on Wanderers TV, or uh, to Wickham Sound, because we broadcast it live as well, uh, there was a fantastic uh, opportunity for supporters to uh, put questions to Rob Kuig and the manager Gareth Ainsworth which was a bit of a surprise, a surprise addition to the panel as well uh, Phil was hosting and we started off by hearing from the manager talking about any possible new signings once again 
I think losing Sam Volks and Brandon together to injury was a blow um, and we've had to work hard in that department to, to get things together but if the right signing at the right price comes I, I will refuse to overspend in the market I refuse um, I will not put this club in jeopardy of, of overpaying you know it's, it's not something I'll do I, I, one thing that when I took over and we, we had absolutely nothing was I learned how to I learned how to get value for money uh, and believe me Rob has pushed me a few times and said look there's, there's extra there's extra but in the current market I won't, I won't pay over the odds because it causes problems further down the line um, so if the right player at the right price comes along we're always looking we're going to be looking right up to the last minute which is next week and uh, you know, I think that Mawson was a big one. The keeper was always a big one, and, and we have to say that we were so far down the line on the goalkeeper. It was unbelievable that, um, that a certain big club that probably everyone has sussed out who it was. <laughs> well, their owners won't even confront their fans. Their fans are protesting and in the streets, and your owners are willing to take any question. Um, I think that says a lot, you know, about the two clubs. And uh, like I say, right, right player, right price. Yes, wrong price. No player. That's that's how it goes with me. Yeah. How long is Sam out for? Do you know? Or is it a long-term injury? Or if I tell you that, then. Every team that we're going to play in the next few weeks will know Sam Volks may or may not be playing against them. Please, everybody, honestly, we don't give injury news out for a reason because if I start telling you how long players are going to be out for, every team that we're playing against knows that that player is not playing or knows when that player comes back. And if I knew that about every team I was playing, it would give me a huge advantage. So we don't know sometimes. I can't prepare sometimes because I think, is he back? Is he not back? Is he back? And they play games. So, um, you know, if you want me to give all the injury news out to everybody and tell every team how many players are injured and how long for, then don't expect the results on a Saturday because I might not get game. They know, they know what team I'm going to pick. It's just a really important thing that you've got to try and keep the others guessing. Uh, injuries happen we've got a few out um, and Volks will be back when he's ready and it's, it's a real tough one he, he's not playing tonight I'll tell you that uh, this one's for you Rob um, are there any plans uh, to improve the acoustics of the terrace I think we saw uh, um, Barnsley this weekend just how effective the high roof um, comes out is but there was only very few of us there but we were loud and I think it would give us a massive advantage if we could improve the acoustics of the terrace it is a great question because it fits into a lot of what I've been doing this week which is what are we going to do for the entire place one of the things that we know that we need to do is have a second access road to come in here and people will look at me like I'm crazy, like the same people when I told them we were going to play in the championship. This week, Sir Edward Dashwood and I met, and we have come up with a working agreement to go get that second access road for the first time since the stadium has been here. We have put our guys in charge of putting the road together, and we expect to have that in, hopefully in the next, I don't know how long the planning stage, I've learned, English planning is, is, is its own special world. But as soon as they give us permission, we're rolling it out and we're coming in, and it will be ecologically sound and all of that. The reason I start with that preface is we're not allowed to do much with our stadium today because we're, we have to content ourselves with 9,200 seats because of the access egress issue. I pushed for that so we could get everybody in here, but because the next phase of that is the terrace. The terrace needs to be fundamentally reworked. We have begun drafting plans to remove this terrace and put in a brand new one because it is embarrassing to me that the visitor's terrace or end has better acoustics than we do, and we're going to have one that can seat as many people as that, if not more. Plus, it will provide us with better bathroom facilities underneath, a diff another room like this underneath uh, there, and it is my hope, and again, this becomes dependent on planning, that, that at the last game of this year, we we begin to take this one down and begin construction of that one. In, in fairness, it'll probably take longer than Kuig wants. Everything does. But uh, that's the goal. 
Just to clarify, it's still a terrace, though, not seats. It will be a terrace, and there may be some seats, and there will certainly be some room for the disabled. Uh, one for Gareth, really. Um, this season has changed with the uh, number of substitutes that you can make. Uh, a, is that helpful? And B, is there a strategy around that that is developing with other clubs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the question was obviously about five subs, and yeah, we've, we've worked really hard on... Uh, on a strategy change because you can change half the team if you can at one time so um, yeah it, the, the simple answer is yes we've got uh, we've built the squad and some of the signings that have come in have been specifically for these these positions you know we've tried to get two players in each position what we play in the two formations that we play so yeah it's, it's something that uh, I think is an advantage um me and Rob had a talk into someone the vote happened and again on a football decision Rob just said what do you want to do which way do you want to go and again back me on, on which way I think the, the season we got promoted it worked really well for us you know so um, yeah it's uh, it, it's something that we've looked into and we've, we've strategically managed so uh, and it, tonight even you'll see there'll be a few players that have planned substitutions because Saturday's a huge game as well you know so um, there's one or two that need to come off but no it's, it's a great question and uh, yeah, I think um, planning, you've got to plan for this now. Yep. I have one going on from this summer. With the success of the England women team, do you have plans to push the women's team for Wickham into the, to the league? I don't, but that doesn't <laughs> mean we're not going to. Uh, Phil Alexander is here somewhere. Phil is our guy who has been hired to advise me on everything that has to do with the business side. I think the best way for me to answer that question, one of the first things Phil did was bring in the large, I think it's the largest sponsor the women's teams has now, uh, because we see it as part of what we're trying to achieve as a community involved in football. But again, I'm always straight with people. My job is to make sure he has everything he needs. If we can help the women, we're going to do it. Um, and, and I think the best proof is we've already done it. And you see them a lot, and this is my plug for Wanderers TV. You'll see that we, we feature them on Wanderers TV. We're doing a lot of interview work with them. It's ways we can help. And let me recommend to everybody in here. If you get a chance, help them out. They could use the help. They're doing a great job on their own, yeah. and a little bit of help wouldn't hurt. Echoed by us here at Wickham Sound, and uh, next week we'll have a, a season preview uh, for Wickham Wanderers women as well. Don't forget you can catch the full Q&A on the Wickham Wanderers website. More from the manager now, though, speaking to Phil after the game last night. I wanted to be through the next round. I thought we may be able to get them to penalties and, and late on there. You know, we've uh, we've protected a couple of players, Chris Farino, Anis Mehmeti, and I got them off the park because uh, they're going to be needed in the squad Saturday without a doubt. But some real bright sparks, you know. I thought um, Adam Leathers coming on for his, his full big debut, I thought was was excellent. Real bright spark for us, you know. And then uh, Jack Wakeley stepping up definitely, without a doubt. You know, Jasper Pattenden, you know, some some real good performances. And Daz and Nick and, and JJ playing various positions for me, and you know, can't thank him enough for that. But I thought that the goals that we conceded. I mean, the first one's handball, if I'm honest, and that's that's not something I'll, I've forgotten about that now because the next two, we gave them. You know, the, there's there's some defending issues that we've got to we've got to get better at, and I've just told the boys, and the boys know. You know, we, we talk about what teams thrive on, and and you know, you make silly mistakes, you give them something to thrive on, and they they'll take the opportunity, especially championship side. So you've got to be sure and certain which way you want to play, and and then play that way, but. You know, sometimes decisions on the pitch go, and you live and die by those. And, uh, and unfortunately, you know, we conceded a couple of goals with some some poor, poor decisions, poor defending. But I'm going to focus on the positives. You know, I really am. I really want to just look at the, is it eight or nine players under the age of 22 started the game, the three on the bench that we've only just signed at 18, 19 years old. You know, this club's going places, it really is. And this this infrastructure that we've got, you know, you need to be better. You need to make sure that when you're playing in games, you take your opportunity, take your chance. And I was playing Ali as well, getting a goal. You know, fantastic work, leaps, unbelievably high to get that goal, and uh, brilliant from Anish on the on the left wing there. But we go on Saturday now against Charlton, and that's uh, it's always been the focus, really. Um, no disrespect to the Carabao Cup at all, because I wanted to get through the next round. Man City last year was fantastic. 
fantastic experience for the boys but it's all about the league now for us the chopping and changing the changes to give the players the young players those minutes as well and is that leading to these defensive lapses because it must be tough they're young players you know they're inexperienced but having said that there's a couple of players who've had a lot of games under their belt with with one or two areas there so I'm not just going to pick on the young boys not at all you know we win and lose as a club not as a team not as an 11 or an 18 as a 34 players and how many thousand we're in here today that's how we win and lose we feel it all together and and that's the way we do it at Wickham Um, I just want everyone to be proud and see what we're trying to do here by bringing some of these youngsters on and hopefully later on in the season in the league the likes of Jack Wakeley and, and Jasper and people like that you know coming through may get their chance and these games will have played a huge part in their development and you know Ali of course and, and people like that so really pleased disappointed with the result disappointed with a couple of the goals because I thought we, we matched them at times and we, we, we looked good but you know they're bringing on Semenyo and, and Scott and, and you know Scott and Chris Martin against Jack Wakeley it's, it's sort of a mismatch on experience times but I, I thought we held our own at times and that was really really nice to see We had Sam Vokes with us on commentary this evening on Wanderers TV and he was absolutely delighted for Ali Alhamdi because to score your first goal in senior football it's a huge milestone Oh in front of the terrace as well you know I know, uh, I know that's where he'd want to do it uh, he had a, he had a chance first half for the shot and I said to him you got to hit the target he's certainly hit the target on that one uh, he's got a lot to learn now he really has you know he's a real amazing story his life you know how he's ended up here and uh, we want to get the best out of Ali and, and I believe in him which is really important he's got all the attributes to be a fantastic player it's just getting them all together now and, uh, and we'll work hard on that don't forget you can hear Gareth's chat in full on the website as well uh, you can catch up with our uh, uh, podcast version of the show too not only that but we've got live commentary from the game against Charlton at Adams Park the build up starts from midday and live commentary from Phil from 3 here at Wickham Sound